Good afternoon, everyone. Just about uh, 15 years back, just like anyone else in this room, I was also aspiring to become a student of IIM Bangalore. I come from a very humble family in Vishakhapatnam. I finished my engineering and then I wanted to study in IIM. But somehow, there are some responsibilities which I had at my family end, which made me to take a job. And the job was right in Bangalore itself. And my house was very near to the same institution over here. Every time I come over here, I always think I should also be an alumni over here. But fate had something else for me. That's about a small introduction about myself. Just to give you a small perspective, apart from the uh, professional life which I had, there was always an aspiration for me to take part in social service. And uh, something serving the children was something which is very dear to me and my wife. She is also over here. And I'll just run through a couple of slides which speaks about the journey which I went through personally, along with the many of the people who joined me later on. We had the vision called as let no child go to school hungry ever. So when we speak about a child who goes to a school, imagine you as a student going to a college without having a breakfast. I'm sure that by 10 o'clock, all of us become very dizzy and we want to have some cup of a tea or a coffee or something to keep, to keep ourselves strong enough. Now imagine a six-year-old boy or a seven-year-old girl goes to school with nothing in their stomach. You know, that's exactly what happens, you know, if you don't feed the child a morning nutrition. Yes, we have midday meals, it comes at 12 o'clock, but what about the morning nutrition? Many of the parents actually go for work right early morning, 6 o'clock. So after the dinner which they had the previous night, the next meal is almost 16 hours of gap. And the stomach, stomach cannot wait for that. So this was something which we started as a very small initiative. Again, in Bangalore, a very nearby place in South Bangalore, we started this program. And we went to this place and we identified a school where we thought we would do some sort of a birthday celebration uh, because my, it was my, my daughter's birthday. And we gave some cakes to the children over there. And when I was coming back, one girl actually called me and she said, can you come daily? So it touched my heart. I said, my daughter's birthday I'm celebrating over here. Here is another daughter who's actually calling me to come daily. So I felt, you know, this is something like a clarion call. And I felt, you know, I should do something for them. Some banana, some milk, some bun, some, something to make them happy every day morning before they go to school or even within the school premises. And that's how we started. That was the beginning for me. And the journey started by giving idli and sambar. Uh, my wife used to cook it at my home. And, uh, you know, upma, sometimes poha, sometimes, uh, you know, chapati and jam. The children like it. And sometimes, you know, if you are not able to make anything, at least a simple milk, which can be boiled with bonvita, you know, kind of a hot drink and give it to them. So that made a very interesting journey for myself. I continued to work in a corporate and I used to start my day giving breakfast to the school children and then go to uh, you know the office and during the wee hours of my office time I used to discuss with my wife and my friends what should be the menu for tomorrow, what should we plan for the children, whose birthday is next, who will come and prepare uh, the very delicious food so that we can feed the children. And every time I go and serve these children you know I used to see that happiness in them and when you see these eyes of the children and you have an eye to eye contact you definitely see the divine in them. And this idea which actually made it a very important aspect of doing something for the nation was termed as building the nation through nutrition. I had my founder also with me who joined this program, Shri Madhusudan Sai. And because of him, we were able to expand this program. And uh, the next slides, I'm going to speak a bit more about what actually exactly are we doing and why do we need it. So this the little girl which you see over here, was actually going to school and you know her mother was actually working in a nearby construction company and she actually told me that six o'clock she has to leave and there's nothing she's actually having in the morning and there's something called a severely acute malnourishment and moderately acute malnourishment which happens to girls and imagine if a girl child is actually malnourished what will happen high anemic situations will come imagine when she's getting married do you think she will deliver a healthy baby no definitely so what are we doing for the girl children as such? 
if we don't take care of our own girl children, I mean, specifically I'm saying, you know, what is the way we can build our nation? So that's exactly why we started giving micronutrient health drinks for all the school going children. Even though they have the breakfast, some may not be having breakfast at their homes. We thought, you know, this will be a health drink for them. And that's how we initiated giving various, apart from the normal cooked breakfast, we started giving something which is healthy for them. And this is a simple slide, all of you know it. I, do, I don't want to spend more time on it. But if you have a breakfast, you have a higher IQ, you have high retention span, you are surely going to study well, and you will physically be also very active. But imagine if you don't, the same person doesn't have a breakfast, what will be the, the outcome? So this is exactly what it says, you know, hidden hunger, which can be reduced, increase in attendance. Many children actually come to school on time because something is available for them in the school. You, know, you have bananas lined up over there, buns lined up over there, hot chapati, you know, or jam uh, available over there. I'm sure, you know, all of us, even we ourselves will go to our college if something is given to us absolutely free. And this is what has happened. So finally, after doing all these programs, you know, this is how we used to make them sit together in a circle, you know, make them have breakfast, enjoy it, start the day in a very nice way. And then we witnessed actually the, the role of nurturing their dreams. And this makes us also, interestingly, to tell about the volunteers. You know, that's important. You know, you cannot just get it catered through a hotel and get it done and then disperse it to the schools. No. We used to make our own group of people. One day used to have Pulio Gray, one day used to have Upma prepared. And these are the actual volunteers who came forward early morning, 7 o'clock, preparing for us. There are instances where within the apartment we had 20 families. Every family used to give 10 chapatis. So 20 into 10, 200 chapatis were done and ready. Next day morning, 6 o'clock, go there, distribute the chapatis and come back with the photographs telling that your chapatis have gone to these children. And they get so inspired and they come back and say, you know, this is exactly what I always wanted to do as service. And it doesn't mean that you need to go out and do in a temple or you need to do in any other place which you feel. You can do it at your home itself. It's not that you need to only serve a child like this. You can serve even a maid's child. And this is a platform which we created for ourselves. And today we have 600 volunteers helping us all through making it a very sustainable program. So you can see this picture over here. This picture shows you know, the interest shown by the children to come on time, sit properly, have a proper food, and then go for the classes. Now imagine what will happen to a child when he goes and sits in the class. He is enjoying the classes which have been taught. But 100% more than the child, the teacher enjoys because the teacher knows that, you know, childs are fed. There is no empty stomach over here. Just about maybe a couple of months back when there was no breakfast program, the children were empty and what do I teach them? I can't teach them trigonometry. I can't teach them some social science subjects when they can't even listen to what I'm trying to tell. And this is like something which was very inspiring. Many people joined us in this whole scheme of things, but we never wanted to stop over here. It's not something which we wanted to kind of tell this is a program which is only for a set of people. We would like to make it like a government program. So these kind of schemes which we implemented like the typical cook breakfast or bananas, chickies, cookies or health micronutrition health supplements. We actually started in a small way in 2012, 2013. We again made inroads in 2014. We actually had about 10 schools in place. 2015, we formally registered a trust to work out the ways how we can make it like uh, implementing partner for various governments. And then 2016, we had various cook breakfast items. From there, we moved on to health, health items. And then, you know, we started expanding. In 2017, we hit 1 lakh children. Now, when I hit 1 lakh children with the support of all the people, with, with whatever support which we got from the volunteers, I understood that this is something which I am liking. There's a purpose to my life. And I quit my job in 2018. And 2018, I took up this job. I actually had this passion that, you know, if this can be done for one lakh children, you know, why can't I actually make this happen? In 2018, quit my job, took my two children and my wife to a remote village in Chikpalapur, started staying over there, and within a year, we expanded from one lakh to five lakh children. Now, that doesn't stop us. 2019, 20, we had COVID impacted us. 2021 was definitely... Uh, and a, a time which we could not start, you know, do anything. But what we did is we actually gave the grains, the food items which are required for the family. So we were just not serving the 5 lakh children. We were actually serving 5 lakh families. You know, that was a good learning for us. And today, as we speak in 2023, we actually serve 30 lakh children across 24 states. 
Now again, as I say, it's not something where you know you can do it for a small sector of people and you know you say, okay, I'm able to do it for this sector. You got to make it scalable. You got to make the governments understand the need for doing a morning nutrition program. And that's how we have signed up an MOU with almost 18 states and we have permits with another seven states as well. This is exactly the logos which we have at this point of time. As we speak in Karnataka itself, we are doing an MOU sign off to see to the entire 55 lakh children in Karnataka who are given milk powder are given a micronutrient health drink which will actually resist them from any kind of airborne diseases like COVID. So this is exactly what we are intended to make ourselves available for a large set of people over here. And I understand that you know, this is a platform for me to speak about what we are doing, why we do and why all of us can definitely become a part of this program. I always welcome the alumni over here to see if we can also join hands with us because this is a wonderful program and I'm sure we will always make a difference for the child. Now the model as such, we work with Sarkara government, we work with the corporates, you know, we work with people like all of you, Samaja, all of you are a part of this system and that's how we make this happen. Now many people question me, you know, how is it you're able to expand rapidly and what is the reason that you're able to actually make a huge impact to see to it that it goes into the various states. Very simple. In very places, many places, we give them simple health drinks which will help them to actually make more effective and stronger in their health parameters. Now, this is something like which we give simple millet based health drinks with jaggery to actually give a good taste. Or we give something like to the government sponsored milk powder, we give health drinks or health sachets like your protein eggs, you have Danone, you have Boost, Bon Vita, but slightly more on the micronutrition. You have vitamin B1, B2, B3, B19, or B12, etc., which will actually help you to give a much more balance to your diet. We are always actually having only carbs and proteins, but you don't have actually these micronutrients which are generally not available in your diet. So we try to give it to the children over here, and that's exactly what we are doing. I just wanted to show you a simple video about how we actually prepare this micronutrients also, because it's very important for all of you to, to see this. This is basically the facility which we have. The facility is right near to Nandi Hills. Anybody can come and see. This is our office space. And within the office space, we have created a woman empowerment. We see to it that a large women are actually kind of recruited for preparing the micronutrient health mixes. This is our office space. And this is the protocol area. Once you get into the protocol area, the raw materials like your ragi, depleted soya, turmeric powder, vitamin mineral mixes, everything actually gets stacked up into the ground floor. And using the gravitational force, the actual product from the ground floor is taken to the fifth floor. Which means all the items which are required for preparation goes from the ground floor to the fifth floor. Now at the fifth floor, it is called as infeed ingredients. All the items are actually properly in a measured way. It has been dumped into the system. From there, it goes into the next floor, which is basically a filtering road. Now here we use dehumidified air dehumidifier to control the air and also the temperature. The fourth product is basically for filtering the products and after the filtration has happened, it gives a homogeneous proper minute particles of the actual ragi or the malt based or the millet based kind of products. The third floor is called the blender where the actual mixing happens of all these products. Within an hour we can produce two tons and these two tons can actually address almost two lakh children. So that's exactly the functional way of how we try to operate. And later on, which goes into the second floor, where the second floor is where the packaging happens. Sorry, the second floor is for metal detection. The metal det detection actually takes up the, identifies any sort of small, small metals which are there. And from there, it goes into the first floor and where we can decide whether you want to do pouch packing or you want to do jar packing. And based on that, we actually can decide to send it to the location where we want it. And finally, the ground floor where the actual packaging happens, the pouch packing machinery, the jar packing machinery is there. And together we see to be the delivery happens in a very seamless manner. So the human intervention is only at the fifth floor and at the ground floor. Now this kind of machinery, if you think you know, it's impossible, honestly speaking, I would have told the same thing about 10 years back. But actually speaking, it's very, very easy. It's just that the intent has to be there and we can actually produce these kind of factories you know, which will actually help us to build a nation by giving these kind of high energy dense foods at a very affordable cost. Imagine you can get these kind of products even in rural markets at about 100 rupees for half a kg. There are women, there are children, because they come back and tell, I might try it, I'm not able to give Sedlac because it's very expensive. 
I'm saying you don't need to give satellite. You can give this kind of product, which is more affordable. So what we are trying to do is we're trying to do a market description, telling that, you know, this is something which is needed. And if you are able to do this for your child, child will grow better. And this is a small facility. I always welcome you to please come and see this. And we are also welcoming more and more corporate uh, you know, leaders to engage having their CSR activities done in various schools. These are some examples of visits which we had. And finally, this is the theme. What we do, the morning nutrition program for rural students, the problem which we are sorting out is students deprived of morning nutrition need to impact on health and education. The solution, the how, what we do, we do it in a decentralized model. We ensure that the cooks are actually preparing the nutrition in the kitchen itself rather than doing a centralized model. And finally, the duration, it's not like we got to do for one year or two years. It has to become a government policy itself. So that the child comes to the school, there is something available for the school in the morning itself, plus your midday meals program. Output, impact on overall, the increase the immunity, increase the academic performance of child, health, education, everything improves. And this is what we have. We are targeting to complete about close to, you can see the numbers over here, from 30 lakh, we are targeting to complete about 1 crore children this year. And going forward, hopefully, we will see more and more collaborations happening. Thank you very much. I just wanted to tell you that there are some five, six points which I learned. But I just want to tell that for all these works which we do, always we need to have the passion. And I'm sure most of you would have only seen the speakers who have come and spoken about what they actually are doing for that part. The community-centric approach, which I mentioned, the Samaja aspect of it, Collaboration is key. Partners have to come forward to do this program. Innovation, like what we are doing, the micronutrition health drink, where we are trying to set up using nutraceutical facility. Transparent communication with all the partners who are there. Financial savvy, absolutely financial savvy, seeing that you know your budgets are cleared, you have a line of support, and the support to your finance is also there, so that we can budget it accordingly. Advocacy and storytelling, which is what I'm doing over here. And finally, the global perspective, and trying to tell that while we are doing our best to see to it that we are not keeping our children hungry, so this has to be told to larger audience outside of India also. Respect for local culture and finally self-care and resilience. I thank the organizers for giving an opportunity. Thank you.